so very good afternoon doctors today i have operated for elective cesarean section for monochorionic diamnionic twins that is mcda twins doctors we have got two entities in the twins one is zygosity another one is chorionicity so zygosity is nothing but the type of conception chorionicity is nothing but type of placentation now between digos uh, between zygosity and chorionicity chorionicity is the one which decides the prognosis of the twins so now doctors we look into few million dollar points for neat pg and inict exam in related to the twins topic so now we have got two varieties of zygosity one is dizygosity another one is monozygosity so now so between dizygosity and monozygosity dizygosity is the most common variety now dear doctors dizygosity is nothing but fertilization of two ova by two sperms and chorionicity of dizygotic twins are always dcda understood no so chorionicity of dizygotic twins is always dcda now come to the monozygosity dear doctors monozygosity is nothing but the splitting of single fertilized ova now come to the chorionicity of monozygotic twins now chorionicity depends on the time of splitting of ova if it splits between before 3 days it is dcda between 3 to 8 days it is mcda between 8 to 13 days it is mcma more than 13 days it is conjoined twins among this mcd is the most common chorionicity of monozygotic twins okay now come to the determination of chorionicity dear doctors we can determine the chorionicity during pregnancy by usg and even also we can determine the chorionicity after delivery by examining the placenta and fetal membranes now there is a 1 million dollar mcq what is it mcq is what is the preferable time to determine chorionicity during pregnancy is the 11 weeks to 13 weeks plus 6 days you got the point so between 11 weeks to 13 weeks plus 6 days is the preferable time to determine chorionicity during pregnancy now come to the usg criteria to diagnose dcda twins mcda twins and mcma twins now we will take uh, dcda twins on usg in dcda twins there will be two gestational sac two separate placenta and two separate fetuses with a thick intertwin membrane that is more than 2 mm now dear doctors in dcda on usg there is a one characteristic sign that is twin peak sign or lambda sign yes yes so now come to the usg criteria of mcda twins so in mcda twins on usg there will be single gestational sac so single gestational sac with single placenta with thin intertwin membrane that is less than 2 mm and there will be twin peak sign will be absent in mcda so in place of twin peak sign there will be t sign in mcda twins now come back to the usg criteria to diagnose mcma twins so in mcma twins on usg there will be once again single gestational sac with single placenta with absent intertwin membrane okay now come to the how to determine the chorionicity after delivery dear doctors after delivery always examine for placenta if you see two separate placental masses it is always dcda if you see single placental mass please examine for intertwin membrane if intertwin membrane is thick and it has got four layers that is two chorion and two amnion it is once again dcda if intertwin membrane is thin and it has got only two layers that is only two amnions it is mcda and if there is no intertwin membrane it is always mcma you got the point so always after delivery examine for placenta two separate placental masses it is dcda if it is single placental mass examine for intertwin membrane if it is thick and it has got four layers Yes, it is dcda if it is thin and it has got two layers it is mcda and no intertwin membrane it is mcma this placenta you all can see the two umbilical cords okay you all can see what two umbilical cords and we can see the single placenta in the single placenta we can see one 
thin inter thin membrane so dr single placenta with thin inter twin membrane it is always suggestive of mcda placenta and if you have got two placenta with thick inter twin membrane it is always dcda placenta and if you have got single placenta with no inter twin membrane it is always mcma you all see please examine so you can see the two umbilical cords and single placenta with a thin inter twin membrane yes it is always suggestive of mcda yes it is always suggestive of what mcda if you have got two placenta with a thick inter twin membrane it is dcda and we have got single placenta with no inter twin membrane it is always mcma okay so now why due to between zygosity and chorionicity always chorionicity will decides the prognosis of the twins because if you come to the dcda we will plan for delivery around 37 to 38 weeks when come for the mcda we will plan for delivery around 36 to 37 and when come for mcma that is mono amniotic twins we will plan for elective cesarean section around 32 to 34 weeks i think this is clear final take home message two placenta yes so two placenta with a thick intertwin membrane it is always dcda and single placenta with a thin intertwin membrane it is always mcda and single placenta with no intertwin membrane it is mca and you all can see once again the thin intertwin membrane and these intertwin membrane has got two layers only the amnion in mcda the intertwin membrane have got only two amnion if you take dcda the intertwin membrane will have two chorion and two amnion yes yes thank you